Joining me live now is Australian Automotive Dealer Association CEO, James Vortman. James, thanks so much for joining us. What do you think about this proposal? Is it going to work as intended or the government wants it? Look, we've been on record saying that we believe uh, the government's proposal goes too far, too fast. Uh, we're really concerned uh, that trying to reduce uh, the emissions of our entire fleet by 60% over a period of five years goes beyond what other countries have done and as a result risks us um, compromising affordability and choice of vehicles here in Australia. Why is that? I mean, if you really want to get emissions down, it's about getting older cars off the road. The new ones are, are pretty efficient or the most efficient they've been in, in any time in history. Well, that's, a, that's a, an excellent point. The best way to improve our emissions profile is to get old, road, old cars off the road. This standard will only apply to new cars. And if we do make vehicles more expensive, people are less likely to upgrade, uh, get out of their old car into a new car, and new cars are generally safer, cleaner and greener. So I think we need to be very conscious that when we make these uh, uh, decisions, uh, that we need to know that there are 3 million cars sold in Australia every year. 1 million of them are new, are new and 2 million of them are used. So there is choice there for consumers. And if, if they have a restriction of toy choice or if new vehicles are too expensive, uh, they will shop on the used market. Yeah, James, the way I look at it is the government needs people to buy new cars and older cars need to be decommissioned. That's how you get to a, a cleaner uh, emissions standard, don't you? But uh, we're looking at a cost of living mm. uh, crisis at the moment uh, and new cars in Australia uh, compared to our peers, are just getting more and more expensive, aren't they? Well, look, that's right. And, you know, if you look at overseas, uh, countries have generally used scrappage schemes, which are those that you've talked about, trying to get mm. older cars off the road, by incentivising consumers to buy those new cars. Yeah. Um, and also, the proposal that the government's put forward is something we've seen in other markets. We're one of the very few countries that don't have a fuel efficiency standard, and we need one but we need one that is appropriate. The United States, who we've been compared to, has had decades to reduce their emissions with a similar system. Mm. They also provide consumers with rebates of around 7500 US dollars. So if we're trying to catch up with the rest of the world, we need to put in place the policy frameworks that they've put in place in other parts of the world. I'm thinking of Singapore as well. Would you support uh, what they do in Singapore? And that is... Uh, this is not exactly right, but for, uh, the older your car gets, the more you pay in rego every year. Mm. Would that work? Look, uh, you know, there are some uh, real issues with that when you're talking about fairness. Not everybody can afford a new car, so that would be, uh, you know, a bitter pill to swallow for, yeah. for some of those people. Singapore does have the different challenges. It's an, an island state, and they really do need to regulate the number of cars on their roads. Um, so it is incredibly expensive uh, to own and operate a car in Singapore. Um, in yeah. Australia, you know, we, we love our cars and, um, you know, we shouldn't be seeking to, to <laughs> tax them further than they already are because I can promise you, Laura, motorists are paying a lot of money in, um, in yes. various fuel taxes, uh, uh, stamp duties and the like. Luxury car tax, it is a web of tax if you're buying a car new or old. But before I let you go, James, and is there any free advice for the government on your way out of this interview this morning as to how mm. you, because you're at the coalface, right, how you think yeah, they could achieve yeah. what they obviously want to achieve without in doing what they're doing? Well, look, I must, it must be said they've, they've put forward their preferred option, but it's mm. not their only option. So I do believe the government's still open uh, to discussion with industry, and I would urge them uh, to have that discussion with industry and understand that, that the retailers in Australia um, know what customers want. Um, they also know that manufacturers need time to bring these new fuel-efficient vehicles to the country. So um, work with us uh, and let's work together to get the best outcome for, for industry and for consumers. Well said, James. Thanks so much for your time.